Hello everyone and welcome to my top 10 reasons to DNA test for family history, compiled for Family Tree magazine. So let's get started. What's at number 10? To discover your ethnic admixture, commonly known as ethnicity estimates. Ethnicity estimates are provided as part of an autosomal DNA test. They're the most well-known and advertised aspect of DNA testing, but not, in my opinion, the most useful. They're only really accurate to the continental level and cannot be taken too literally. There will be errors. They can give you a broad idea of your origins, though, and may provide genealogical clues if you were, say, adopted or have a recent unknown ancestor mystery. They're going to vary between companies because each company has their own reference population. This is an emerging science, and although it will improve over time as more people test and reference populations increase, it's best not to read too much into it. It's the DNA cousin match list, which you also get with an autosomal test, that is the most important part of your results for genealogical purposes. It really is all about the cousins. Number nine. To leave a legacy for your descendants. The way autosomal DNA inheritance works, older generations have more of our ancestors' DNA than we do. Our parents have double, our grandparents have three times our ancestors' DNA. So test your older generations. And if you are the older generation, test yourself. Leave that legacy for the generations to come. Number eight, to research surnames. A lot of people like doing surname studies following the direct paternal line as far back as you can take the surname. This is the father's 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 line. The best test for this is a Y chromosome DNA test. Only men have a Y chromosome, so only men can take this test. Women must recruit appropriate males to test for them, such as a father or brother. Only Family Tree DNA offer a Y DNA matching database and projects for this purpose. So if you want to do a surname study, you have to test there. They're also the only company that offer a mitochondrial DNA matching database. That's the mother's 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 line. But these aren't helpful for surname studies as the surname tends to change each generation. Number seven. To test hypotheses. If documentation doesn't exist to prove a particular relationship, perhaps DNA can fill that void. Depending on the relationship, you could use autosomal, Y or mitochondrial testing to gain insight. Remember, autosomal is limited to the last five to seven generations approximately. So if you're looking for evidence for a hypothesis about a sixth great grandparent, for example, you will likely need to turn to Y or mitochondrial for that. But let's say you don't know who your great grandparents were and you have a guess, you have a hypothesis about who they were. Well, you can use autosomal for that. You can trace forward to living descendants of the potential great grandparents, ask if they'll test, test yourself, and you will get an answer to your hypothesis. Number six, to map your DNA back to your ancestors. Now this is a more advanced reason and I wouldn't advise you to try this when you're just starting out, but it's a really interesting thing to do down the line when you have more experience and more confirmed cousins in the databases. This is a technique known as chromosome mapping, and it's assigning segments of your DNA back to specific ancestors or ancestral couples. In order to do this, you have to be able to identify relationships between you and your DNA matches because it's the segments that you share that you can map back to your shared ancestors. This is a visual from a program named GenomeMate Pro, which I use all the time and is fantastic for organizing DNA data. And here's an example of what I'm doing. This is my great grandparents, John Campbell and Janet Cullen, and I've assigned them a particular color. And every segment on my map that has that color, I have mapped back to John and Janet, like this one on chromosome seven. Now, it's really interesting and exciting for me to know which bits of my DNA came from which of my ancestors, but it's not just a curiosity because it's extremely helpful for DNA matching. Whenever you get new matches in who match you on any of these segments that you've been able to map back to particular ancestors, you can narrow down how you match that new person 
enormously. Say, for instance, I get a new match and they match me on the exact segment on chromosome 7 that I've mapped back to John and Janet. Well, I then know that I only need to look at John and Janet's portion of my tree for the link between me and my new DNA match. It cuts out a whole host of other possibilities and makes it a lot easier to identify the common ancestors. This is another chromosome painting mapping tool called DNA Painter, which has just come out in the last month or so. And if you're interested in chromosome mapping, I'd advise you to have a look at that as well. Number five, to connect with new cousins. One of the most exciting parts of using DNA for genealogy is finding new confirmed cousins who show up on your match list. Try to contact them. Many won't respond, but those that do may have photographs, family stories, memorabilia that you don't have, or you may have things that they don't have. Sharing information and getting to know your new cousins is really rewarding. As more people test, you're going to find even more of these cousin connections come along who can help you with your family tree research. And more people are testing all the time. Autosomal DNA testing is exploding and becoming mainstream. Over 9 million people have now taken an autosomal DNA test across all of the different databases. Over 5 million of those at Ancestry DNA alone. And it's projected that this number will rise to over 20 million by 2020. Can you imagine how many cousin connections we're all going to have by then? And as an example of what you can get when you contact your DNA matches, uh, I contacted a confirmed cousin and they were able to send me these amazing pictures. This is my third great granddad taken in 1855 and that's her daughter beside her. I wouldn't have these but for DNA matching. Number four to add new branches to your tree. And this goes hand in hand with contacting your new cousins. When you identify cousins via DNA, it helps you add new branches to your tree. Collateral line branches, the descendants of the siblings of your direct ancestors. Now you may not have traced them before or you could be stuck trying to trace them forward, but your new cousin matches should be able to provide information since they are the direct descendants of these people. An example of me adding a collateral line to my tree, this is a second cousin three times removed I identified at Ancestry and I had his grandfather, my third great granduncle James Hamilton on my tree but I didn't have him, I didn't have his father, I didn't have his siblings so I've added all these new people and new branches to my tree through DNA matching. Number three, to break down brick walls. We all have them. We all want to smash them down. It's frustrating. It's not easy, but DNA can help. Here's one of mine, my third great grandfather, Robert Cullen. He died in the 1820s. There's no documentation in existence that can tell me who his parents were. So they are a brick wall. Now, there's one potential birth for him that I've identified in Glasgow in 1802 to parents John Cullen and Elizabeth Morton. But I can't prove that this is the right birth for him because he could easily not have even been registered. Fast forward to DNA testing and I get a fourth cousin match, also descended from Robert. And this tells me that his daughter Margaret named one of her children Elizabeth Morton Johnston after her grandmother, perhaps? This is a really big clue. Since then, I've also had several matches in who are directly descended from none other than John Cullen and Elizabeth Morton themselves, this one via their daughter, Christian. Putting all of this DNA evidence together, I am now convinced that John and Elizabeth must have been my Robert's parents and I have added them to my tree and their other children. So I've broken my brick wall and enhanced my tree. Number two, to solve the unsolvable mysteries or unsolvable up until DNA that is. There are some genealogical puzzles traditional research can never solve as the documentation simply doesn't exist. 
DNA has opened up a whole new world of possibilities for those with adoption, unknown parentage, unknown grandparentage, illegitimacy and other unknown ancestor mysteries. Let's say you have your grandfather's birth certificate and on it there is only the mother's name and a big fat blank for the father. There's nobody alive that's going to be able to tell you who that mystery man was. There's no documentation that you're going to be able to find to tell you who he was. But DNA just might. Using cousin matching, it's possible to solve these puzzles and find out who your mystery ancestors actually were. Finally, we're at number one. So what have I chosen as my top personal reason to DNA test for family history? Well, to confirm the lines of your tree, to verify your direct ancestors. Here's an example. This is my second cousin once removed on Ancestry. He is that magic one generation closer to our common ancestors than I am, so he has more of their DNA. Our common ancestors are my second great-grandparents, his great-grandparents, John Cullen and Janet Nicholl. Now, because we have this verifiable paper trail relationship, and we also share a significant amount of DNA in the right range to be second cousins once removed, that's giving me really brilliant evidence that John and Janet were genuinely my second great-grandparents and all of the DNA I share with my second cousin once removed, I can map directly back to them. Now, some people will say, well, that's just telling me what I already know. It's not very exciting. Well, I disagree. I think it is, is very exciting. And it's not just telling you what you already know. It's telling you what you think you already know is actually correct. It's priceless verification to add to your paper trail evidence. DNA is the only record set that does not and cannot make mistakes or lie. No matter how great a researcher you are, how well sourced your paper trail, it can always be erroneous because human beings do make mistakes and human beings do lie on occasion. So after so many years of researching my tree to have confirmation like this, that I genuinely share bits of DNA with these ancestors I've identified is gold dust to me. Now, is this really more important than being able to break a brick wall, test a hypothesis? No, it's not more important, but I would say it's equally important. And I've put it at number one because I think it's the one thing that more people will be able to do when they get their results and because I think it's a bit overlooked. So I wanted to put it out there as one of the best reasons to DNA test for family history. And that concludes my top 10. If you have any DNA queries or want to DNA chat, you can catch me on Ancestry Hour on Twitter most Tuesday evenings between 7 and 8 p.m. You can also follow me on Facebook at Genes and Genealogy and you can catch me on Twitter at Genealogy Lass. Thanks for watching.